Thanks for joining me today. This is Danny and welcome back to my Real Tech series. Today we're going to be doing a few different miscellaneous things, including taking a look at some changes to Pollution of the Realms. We're going to be revisiting the aerial interface because some new information that I got for something that we can do to make it more powerful. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of a tweak to this road here where it just ends. Um, I want to have it go down to the boathouse. And finally, I need to get, actually maybe not finally, this might be one of the first things I do. I need to get some redstone. If we have time, we're going to do a little bit more searching for minerals for the excavator, which we're going to be doing in the next episode. So let's get started. So I have a pack update coming out and I wanted to show you some changes to the pollution of the realms um, filters because they behave differently now than they used to. You used to set up these fil or craft these filters and then you would put them in an anvil to repair them. Well, now they are a little bit more interactive and um, interesting, I think. So the way they work now is when you create or when you set down a filter, um, it basically looks like this. It's just an empty filter with nothing in it. And what you put in it is going to determine what it's going to filter. So if we put wool in this thing, um, it's going to filter sulfur and it shows us here. So we have we now have this GUI in here. Um, it's showing us that it's going to filter sulfur. If we put leaves in there, um, it's going to filter carbon. And if we put paper in there, it's going to filter dust, volcanic dust or ash or whatever. And what happens is it's going to consume the wool over time and it's going to give us some kind of a byproduct. So um, Let's see if any of these have produced anything. Yeah, so here we go. <laughs> so this, so it consumed one of the wool and it gave us some sulfur. So, oh, you, you can, you can have that. Um, it's going to give us, it's going to give us sulfur now. So this is actually going to be a nice source of sulfur for us, which we don't need a whole lot of sulfur in this pack, um, but we will in the future. And as you might notice, this particular piece of sulfur is from Railcraft and we do have Railcraft in the pack now. So that's pretty exciting. I know a few of you guys have been asking for that. I'm going to consider using Railcraft when we set up our excavator um, for item movement. So, so that's that. If we do, um, if we're filtering carbon, we actually end up getting coal dust. We'll get a small amount of coal dust, and if we filter dust, we get. I don't remember. I'll have to look that up. Um, oh no. Okay. So that is that. We looked at those filters. So the aerial interface. So in the last episode, I had set up this aerial interface from Pneumaticraft that allows us to allows us to charge our armor and our items in our inventory that use RF. And it also allows us to interact with our player inventory um, using logistics or whatever. So it's pretty nice. However, I did make one mistake um, when I set this thing up. So, so in order to get this thing to charge our armor, we need to put a charging module on the end of a pressure tube pointing into the aerial interface. Um, however, so that tells the aerial interface that it can charge our armor. However, it doesn't give the aerial interface pressure. So we actually have to have a second tube going into the aerial interface. And then the other thing, I got a tip from the mod author when I did a stream, we can take an advanced PCB, which I think I already have. No, I don't. So we'll have to make an advanced PCB. I can't believe I don't have one of these. They're made in sets of four. I don't think, yeah, I don't think I would have used four of them. Would I? <laughs> I have one somewhere. I'm sure I do. <laughs> I'm sure of it. All right. Well, I'm gonna look for those things. I'll be I'll be right back. Getting ready to make my advanced PCB. Um, making I'm making another one of these printed circuit boards. You may remember these if you were with me when we were doing the um, Pneumaticraft thing. I've learned after doing this multiple times that this is what we need for it. One green plastic, three plastic, three plastic, three black plastic, three cyan plastic, six compressed iron, and six redstone. And if we just throw all that in here at once. That'll get us, actually, let's do it that way. Yeah, that'll get us what we need. Um, and then from that, we're gonna be making this. So I need four, red this, this right here is all the redstone I have left <laughs> in the whole world. So yeah, I'll be working on getting some redstone soon. So there's our, 
our circuit. Do we have speed upgrades in here? We do. Okay. So once the rest of that stuff comes in, is that everything? Yeah. Why does it look? Yeah. Okay. Oops. All right. So that I'm going to put in here and then this guy is going to turn that into, into the printed circuits. Oh, what happened here? Um, okay, we're one, one transistor short. Did I? I think I didn't put enough compressed iron in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Alright, so that guy's done. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> oh, another thing I learned from the mod author is that we don't need something, anything there to pull stuff from the, <clears throat> the pressure chamber interface does push. So we can actually just put this chest right there. And then it'll be faster, because then it won't have to go out the... Oh, oh and it, actually, we can still open it. Look at that. That's amazing. So this must not be looked at as a full block. Okay, so first we need to make that, and then we're going to make that. And then, okay, so I'll show you what, that's, what we're going to do with that in a second. But before we do that, we need to get some pressure in here. Um, so I'm going to be using high pressure, or advanced tubes. Go here for oh, and then there. Okay, so now this guy is going to fill up with pressure, and it's starting to now that it has enough pressure, it's starting to charge our stuff. Yay! <laughs> so that's all charged. It doesn't charge my backpack though, my capacitor backpack. So I'm not sure what that's all about, but I bet if I take it out and put it in my inventory, no, it's still not charging it. Oh, now it's charging it. Okay. Interesting. So not that we need the backpack anymore because this thing will always keep our stuff charged. So whatever. Okay. Oh. Um, I guess we'll camouflage that. If I can find my camouflage adapt. There we go. So I need to shift right click on this. And then... <laughs> I can get in there. There we go. Okay. So now this guy is going to charge all our stuff for us um, quickly. Now, so the advanced, what the advanced PCB is going to do is it's going to speed up this. So if we're flying right now, you can see that if we look in the lower left at my air pressure, we can see that it isn't quite keeping up while we're flying. But as soon as we land, ow, <laughs> as soon as we land, it charges back up fairly quickly. Um, but we can make it go way, way faster, way faster by taking one of these advanced PCBs and just right clicking on the charging module. Ta -da! So that's similar, that's similar to what we did with this guy, this pressure gauge tube module. We right click that with a uh, advanced PCB to give it some more functionality. I'm gonna put these in here, and they crafted sets of four, so I don't, I don't know what I did with the rest of them, <laughs> but whatever. Oh, it's snowing! All right, so now if we check, we can see that it is now keeping up. If you look in the lower left, we're not losing pressure at all. So, so thanks to Desh, the mod author, he commented on my stream where I was playing with this to let us know um, that we can do that to make things faster. So, check. I go fly away for some redstone. I go up and then come back down and I go really fast. <laughs> Whoa, but I'm gonna hit the mountains. Pretty sure it's that white waypoint that we're heading toward. There's our ranger station. Oh, I went too far. Alright, so it's right around here. 
there. So it's in this chunk. I see lava down there. Good thing I'm digging straight down. Okay, I found it. It was like on the edge of the chunk. Oh my gosh, this is a very small cinnabar vein. Good thing I have luck on my pick. Alright, I got it all. It was all tangled up in the bedrock, so it was kind of a pain getting some of the stuff, but got a decent amount. 10 stacks plus 14. Hooray! Whee! Now we can fly back home. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. Crashed into my house. Blindly. And now, ta-da! Oh wow. We don't even have enough room in there for all this redstone. So now I want to do a little bit of landscaping slash building, I guess, road building. This is kind of weird here, this intersection. Um, of course it's hard to tell with the snow, but it's because it's not an intersection, it's just a 90 degree turn in the road. But I, I've been wanting to have this road go out to the to here oh <laughs> it's a frozen boat and have a boat dock kind of out here with kind of a boardwalk i guess that goes to the boathouse that just gives us another way into the boathouse rather than having to go either swim <laughs> or go up to the top so i'm thinking like we'll have it connect up here and then come along here along the shore and maybe have a few like spots for docking the boat when it's not winter and of course we have our boat house for when it is winter because we can store our boat in there without worrying about it freezing and ending up under the water. Um, it was one of the main reasons I built the boat house. And then our, of course our uh, speed boat breaks through ice once it gets out. Oh. So I'm going to have to um, remove this cactus farm and we'll, we'll be actually working on moving the cactus farm in a future episode. <laughs> Uh, because I have some plans that involve cactus for the future. Um, I'm going to get rid of this little pond, this beautiful little pond that we stand in while we're breaking um, blaze rods so that we don't burn to death. Uh, so we'll have to change that setup as well. Um, so I guess I'm going to go with the same road design, even though I'm not particularly crazy about it. Um, but I don't know. We'll see if may maybe I'll come up with a different design even and then just redo all this stuff, too But for now, I just want to get everything pathed out and stuff um, So I mean the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of these because this is just going to continue on like this so I Oh crap, I don't really want to do that But whatever we can just we can just get rid of this stuff this ice Fill it up with uh, dirt. I've got plenty of dirt in my dirt backpack. In fact, I just threw away <laughs> like 10 stacks of dirt. Buy a little pond. So maybe we'll have to come up, we'll have to build another little pond somewhere else so I can use all these, <laughs> these pretty little uh, <laughs> lily pads and such. It was nice hearing the frogs there in the spring and summer. Now, I'm not really driving much these days because, you know, I can fly. <laughs> so this is really more for aesthetic, for aesthetics than anything else. I just, this just has kind of an unfinished feel over here. And I want it to feel a little bit more like, you know, like it's done. Like it's, like we did something here. The missing pieces mod gives us grass path wedges. <laughs> Let's see how that looks. If we do something like that. Okay, I mean, it's, it works. I, oh, except for that. Hmm, I wonder why that edge is funny like that. Yeah, whatever, I'm fine with that. We get these grass wedges when we use the exchanging wand um, from Not Enough Wands. Yeah, let's just do that here too. Yeah, it actually looks better when that's dirt. So maybe, maybe we could change that to dirt down there. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. Oops. And then down here, somewhere down here, I'm gonna, we're gonna switch to wood. Um, I'll have to decide what wood to use. I'm thinking I want to do something different than what we have here. This is iron. <laughs> this is iron wood. And I don't want it to look like it's a part of the house. I want it to look like it's a little bit different. I'm thinking maybe a darker wood, like dark oak or something, or maybe even spruce. Let's see how this would look up against there. That could work, I think. Yay, it's finally spring. And uh, so, like, spring arrived, and all of a sudden these things just exploded. Um, I'm still working on kind of like I'm in the middle of a bunch of different kind of redesigns here because I'm not real happy with the way it looks so far. Um, but this is the state of things at the moment. I think I'm happy with how this turned out for now, although I may add some more detail at some point in the future. Um, I ended up using chiseled spruce planks, um, which allowed me to add a little bit of variety in the way the planks are arranged and such. Um, these planks here are actually vertical planks. And I use them here because they have a north-south grain as opposed to east-west, like all the other planks in the game. So that way we could have the planks running this way instead of the long way along the dock. Um, I ha actually have two different types here. There's uneven planks, and then there's just the regular um, vertical planks. Uneven vertical and then regular vertical. Um, just, again, to give it some variety. So there's some different size planks here and there. And then here... Because the chiseled wood planks are a slightly different color than the vanilla ones, I did have to use chiseled planks here as well. Um, and again, I have two different ones. I have the planked ones, which are these. They almost have kind of a brick pattern if you look at it at an angle. You can see there's lots of short planks there. Um, and then there's also smooth ones that don't have those at all. Just, again, to give it some variety, there are no uneven ones um, that run in this direction. So so we just so I just went with that to give it a little bit of variety. And then these are from the Rustic Mod. These are wooden stakes. Um, they're normally used for gardening, but they also look nice here. I actually used these when I built the boat dock as well. And, the, and one nice thing about them is they're similar to fences, except they don't connect like fences do. And you can put these ropes on them, also from the Rustic Mod. So when you right-click on one of those with a rope, it uh, wraps it around it. And then if you break it, it breaks the rope first. So that's how you can take that off. And I put the ropes on somewhat randomly. There's one there, and there's a few that don't have it. Just to kind of make it look like, you know, this is a boat dock that's being used to tie up boats and such. And then this one is here, I guess, to kind of look like it's going to stop you. Because you can also place them like that after you know next to another rope um, and yeah that's it so then we've got the vertical planks here again and that and from inside here it looks looks like you know a rough boat dock it's it's not obviously it's not symmetrical it's not clean it, it looks like something that was built to kind of match the landscape here so so that's it oh and these are also from rustic I got a lot of rustic stuff going on in this build these are the iron lanterns from the rustic mod So that's that. Oh, I, I don't know. Did I show you this whole path? So I've got I got this path done. Um, so it's basically the same as the paths that I have everywhere else. It's just grass paths in the middle, and then we've got chiseled variants of cobblestone on the sides, and then I use architecture craft to get those angles. And then here, the sand is kind of spilling out over <laughs> into the path a little bit, in there too. So yeah. So that's that. So we can check. Road to the Boathouse off the list. And then in a future episode, in, in the coming episodes, I've got a few different plans. Um, we're going to do the excavator from Immersive Engineering to get some iron. I've got some right over there. Um, and, and possibly some rail item transport. I was thinking I was going to use the rail item transport to transport the stuff that we get from the excavator um, over to our um, factory for processing. So I'll probably end up just using our existing network, but I wanted to try to come up with a way to uh, incorporate Railcraft in that because we do have Railcraft in the pack now. I think I mentioned that earlier because I know some of you guys really wanted that pack or that mod in the pack. So I did some playing around with it, some testing. I tweaked some things and, and now here it is. Um, and then I want to do some 
olive oil. These two kind of go together. I want to do some olive oil automation, um, which is going to involve a tree farm and some other various things. And, and then some food production. We're going to do two different types of foods. One of those is probably going to be deluxe nachos because they're delicious and they give us everything, dairy, fruit, grain, protein, and vegetables. So we can do that, but then we'll have to make another food that doesn't give us anything at all. Um, that doesn't give us any nutrients so that we can keep our nutrients balanced and keep all of our buffs, giving us all these extra hearts and stuff. So that is what's to come. If you do have any questions or whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And also, if you happen to not know this already, I do stream on Twitch every Thursday night and also every other Saturday. And you can find my Twitch link um, in the description below. Also, I think it's in my channel header as well. Check that out if you're interested. And otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.